Today on Rappler. At sigurado din ako na hindi unilateral decision ni Senate President Rilon ang mamigay ng 50 million pesos kada senador. Jingo Estrada says Senate President Drillon gave senators 50 million each after they voted to convict former Chief Justice Corona. Lifestyle check. Is Jingoy building a multi-million peso house? Ilang araw na hindi ako nakatulog nun dahil naiisip ko sila. Tumuhay sila. Tumuhay. Naglalaro ng tatlo. And a look at the plight of landslide victims in Zambales. Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Senator Jingoy Estrada criticizes what he calls the selective trial by publicity against opposition senators tagged in the multi-billion peso pork barrel scam. In a privileged speech Wednesday, Estrada hit Senate President Franklin Drillon, House Majority Leader Boyet Gonzalez, and Commission and Audit Chair Grace Pulido Tan. But Estrada did not address the allegations linking him to alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Lim Napoles. In an hour-long speech, the senator blasts Drillon for allegedly using discretionary funds to influence the impeachment proceedings against Chief Justice Renato Corona. Drillon was Senate Finance Committee Chair in 2012. Estrada says Drillon facilitated the release of 50 million pesos to each senator in exchange for Corona's conviction. He also says the executive branch must have a role in facilitating the release of the funds. Saan galing ang pinamigay na pondo sa mga senador? Siguradong sigurado ako. Alam na alam ni Secretary Abad ang sagot sa tanong na ito. At sigurado din ako na hindi unilateral decision ni Senate President Drillon ang mamigay ng 50 million pesos kada senador. Estrada says the use of the Priority Development Assistance Fund, or PDAF, to bribe lawmakers to support the administration's initiatives is an open secret. He says he did not receive any special allotment release order for his PDAF after voting against bills like the syntax reform and reproductive health laws. Estrada also criticizes Aquino ally Gonzalez. The senator also quoted from a COA report that found instances of Gonzalez's PDAF being misused from 2007 to 2009. He draws special focus on Gonzalez's 6.6 million pesos worth of transactions with fast food chain Jollibee. 6.6 million pesos worth of transactions sa Jollibee. Ano ito? 6.6 million pesos worth ng hamburger, chicken joy, at jolly hot dog. Aba, langhap na langhap ang sarap. Estrada also attacks COA's alleged selective and biased audit report. He says the pork barrel of administration lawmakers were not fully audited. And out of this 29 billion, COA was able to audit only 8 billion pesos. Nasaan na punta ang 21 billion pesos? The COA report also said that it was not able to establish the total releases for each legislator. Kulang na kulang. 351 million pesos lang ang na-audit kay Senator Alan Peter Cayetano. 5 million pesos lang ang na-audit sa PDAF ni dating Senador Mar Rojas. 3 million pesos lang ang na-audit kay Senator Antonio Trillanes. Samantala, ang kay Enrile, kay Revilla, at kay Estrada ay bunusisi at tiningnan ang kabuuan ng kanilang PDAF? What makes us so special? Responding to Senator Estrada's complaint that only opposition senators are singled out in the pork barrel scam, House Majority Floor Leader Boyet Gonzalez says the plunder case is based on testimonies of whistleblowers. He was not named as among those colluding with pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Limnapolis. 
lang, parang, parang, parang mali eh. Mali yung sinasabing, sinasabing, uh, bakit itong mga to hindi nyo dinidemanda? Bakit kami lang? Eh, kasama ba kami doon sa, wala, wala naman akong ano eh, wala naman ako na polis eh. Ba't ako masasama? Na, ba't naman ako masasama? Co-chairperson Grace Polido Tan also responds to Estrada's speech, saying the senator vindicated COA by not making any denials. She says he did not deny our findings. It's a vindication for us that he himself, who was identified in the PDAF audit, has no complaints about the findings. Citing COA's report, Estrada named Gonzalez as one of those found to have irregularities in his pork barrel. But Tan says Estrada's acknowledgement that administration allies were included in the report disproved his complaint that the report was selective. Senator Jingoy Estrada is reportedly building a new multi-million peso house in one of the country's high-end subdivisions. A source tells Rappler that Senator bought a 3,000 square meter lot in Wakwak subdivision in Mandaluyong. Subdivision residents interviewed by Rappler say it's common knowledge that Estrada owns the house. It's estimated to cost 120 million pesos. The lot alone is estimated between 210 million pesos to 240 million pesos in his, 200, in his 2012 statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth. Estrada declared a net worth of 193.6 million pesos. There was no mention of the Wakwak property. Rappler repeatedly tried to get Estrada's side, but he hung up when we called him on September 18. Documents from the Mandaluyang Registry of Deeds show the property is registered under Verdant Forest Highlands, Inc. But in a complaint affidavit prepared in February 2001 for the Office of the Ombudsman, Verdant Forest Highlands, Inc. was described as a thinly capitalized dummy corporation organized by the attorneys of Joseph E. Estrada to house and conceal his beneficial ownership of 551 Wakwak Street in Mandaluyong. As early as 2000, the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism linked the property to Jingoy's father, then-President Joseph Estrada. In 2010, Navota's representative and Estrada ally Toby Tianco bought 978.29 square meters of the Verdan property. He refused to say who owns the surrounding property or the rest of the lots behind his. Senators are divided on the decision of Senate President Franklin Drillon to defer to the Ombudsman's advice and not to summon Janet Limnapolis to the chamber's probe into the multi-billion peso pork barrel scam. In her letter to Drillon, Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales invoked the confidentiality rule of her office. Senators T.G. Gingona and Chiz Escudero disagree with Drillon, saying the Senate is not bound by the Ombudsman's advice. But Senator Bam Aquino says he is inclined to support the Senate President's decision. Senator Sonny Angara says Drillon may just be cautious in deferring to the Ombudsman's advice. Senator Tito Soto says he is neutral about the issue, adding if the testimony is in aid of legislation, then the polis should be summoned. But if it will just create a circus, then Secretary de Lima is right. The Senate Blue Ribbon Committee will resume its probe Thursday. Drillon agreed to sign the subpoena for Justice Secretary Laila de Lima and the whistleblowers to appear. At least two bullets hit the main office of the Commission on Audit, or COA, in Quezon City early Wednesday. Police recovered two bullet slugs at the office of COA Risk Management and Budget Director Neil De Plaras. The incident happened 6.20 a.m., but was only reported at 8.40 a.m. when COA employees started arriving for work. So, when I came here, I saw a basag of salamin. Neil De Plaras said that there was no one who heard it, so the initial initial parang binato lang ng, uh, ng bato. Okay. Doon nagtagal-tagal, dumating na yung uh, soko natin, investigator. May nakitang slag sa loob ng office ni Director Plaras. Okay. May nakitang dalawang slag doon. Plaras is facing plunder charges in connection with the alleged misuse of charity funds. COA earlier released a report on the pork barrel scam tagging lawmakers who misused their discretionary funds. In a statement, the commission says the reported incident won't affect their work. The reported shooting incident in the Commission on Audit premises this morning is currently under investigation by the police. We do not wish to preempt the investigation. Let us wait for the results of the investigation. In any case, we will not allow this incident to cow us into silence nor deter us from faithfully discharging our constitutional duty. In Barangay Wawandue, Subic, 12 die in a landslide triggered by monsoon rain. 
Eight of the dead are children. This report. Rolly Eher Kodos can barely speak. He lost all three of his sons, Ryan 7, Kian 6, and JR 4 in the landslide. Heavy monsoon rains transformed Barangay Wawan Due Subic into a muddy graveyard. His wife and three daughters made it out alive. He says he kept digging, but his boys were not as lucky. Mga minuto lang po ma'am. Sa sobrang ano ko siguro ma'am, lahat yung mabibigat na yun, nabuhat ko. Nabuhat ko po. Ngayon nakuha ko po yung pangaray ko po ma'am. Kaso po ma'am, hindi po talaga nakaligtas. O si Ryan po. Si Ryan. Kaso po, hindi po talaga siya nakaligtas ma'am. Kasi sa sobrang taas po ng tubig ma'am, hindi po siya naisugod. Junar's wife and two-year-old daughter were rescued. But Junar Itak also lost his two boys, Joros and Joshua, who were 12 and 8. Matagal na may bago na tanggal kasi puro kahoy na kabalagbag sa kanila eh. Matagal na sila ng kahoy. Si Joshua, may naririnig pa ako na, Papa, Mama, nandito ako. Sa tagal nga ng kuhan, rescue namin dahil puro kahoy, hindi namin mabunot-bunot yung kahoy matigas. The Kuanan family suffered the same fate, but in their case, no one made it out alive. All six members, parents Danilo and Elvira, and their four children died. Jovelin, 19, was supposed to graduate college in March. Daniela died the day before her 12th birthday. Daniel was 8 and Doralyn 5. Elder daughter Donalyn was in Manila when the tragedy happened. Kasi, the tragedy caught everyone by surprise. They all say it happened so fast. This is the spot where the landslide happened. The soil came crashing down from the mountains, crushing the houses standing here and burying the victims. In other parts of Subic, 15 more died from landslides while three drowned and suffered from hypothermia, bringing the total death toll to 30. On Wednesday, two days after the rain subsided, Subic Mayor Jay kong Hoon says relief efforts are underway. He promises to find new homes for landslide victims. So, nag-usap-usap kami kahapon nila Congressman Jeffrey kong Hoon at saka nila Governor Junip Dane para tulungan natin na makabigyan sila ng permanenteng relokasyon at the same time para bigyan natin sila ng ano, tulong pampatayin ng mga bahay so, in-expect natin na magiging mahirap, pero siyempre, tulong-tulong na lang tayo. Hindi naman natin pwedeng hayaan na bumalik sila doon, baka mamaya maulit yung trahedya. Fathers, mothers, daughters grieving. They say they had no choice but to live by the mountain because they had nowhere to go. After two weeks, 149 schools reopened in areas of Zamboanga City outside the conflict zone of the standoff between rebels and government troops. The Education Department earlier said 167 schools can already resume classes, but Under Secretary Rizalino Rivera says some barangays recommended to keep classes suspended in their areas. DepEd Zamboanga City Superintendent Pete Natividad says some parents are still wary of sending their children to school, fearing the fighting is not over. As of noon, attendance in the reopened schools did not exceed 10% of the total school population. Security remains a concern, with false text messages circulating that thousands of Mora National Liberation Front rebels are still in Zamboanga. 33 schools in the four barangays and eight island barangays affected by the standoff remain closed. After two deferments, the Commission on Appointments confirms the promotion of a military officer tagged in the enforced disappearance of activist Jonas Burgos. The CA's Committee on National Defense recommends the confirmation of Brigadier General Eduardo Año to the CA plenary despite the objection of Burgos's mother, Edita. Año was promoted Chief of the Intelligence Service of the Armed Forces of the Philippines in December 2012. In the hearing Wednesday, Edita Burgos reiterates her objection to Año's confirmation, calling him a human rights violator. 
Anya was the intelligence chief of the army when Jonas was abducted in 2007. From Las Piñas to Cavite, National Bureau of Investigation operatives reenact the night Kay Devantes was robbed, abducted, and killed. They bring with them 19-year-old Samuel De Simo, a suspect in the killing of the 25-year-old advertising executive. The NBI says the reenactment will help corroborate De Simo's statement. So we didn't problem na i lagay natin dito sa site mismo sa crime scene and base sa kanyang explanation na ganito tinutukan do na sa gate and then dinala nung tatlong ano isinakay dito sa kotse ng babae and then they went out towards Cavite. Devantes's body was found under a bridge in Silang, Cavite. De Simo admits stabbing Devantes but says he was not the mastermind of the killing. His lawyer says they are seeking to lower the charges against the 19-year-old. Police filed charges of qualified carnapping and robbery with homicide against De Simo and five others. Four are currently in police custody. Two remain at large. A powerful 7.7 magnitude earthquake strikes Awaran district in Pakistan's Balochistan province, killing 200 and affecting thousands. Officials say the death toll is expected to rise as rescue teams struggle to reach more villages in the remote area. The force of the earthquake was enough to create a new island off the Pakistani coast, with officials saying the island is up to 100 feet high and 200 feet wide. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 2, Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta announces the four-day siege by Islamist gunmen of a Nairobi shopping mall is over. Kenyatta says three floors of the mall collapsed, trapping several bodies within the rubble. The siege leaves 61 civilians and six members of security forces dead, with the Kenyan Red Cross saying 63 people are still missing. Somalia's Al-Qaeda-linked Shabab rebels say the attack is in retaliation for Kenya's military intervention in the country. At number 9, Apple says it sold a record 9 million iPhones in the three days after launching two new versions of the smartphone. The company began worldwide sales Friday of the high-end iPhone 5S and a lower-cost iPhone 5C. Apple says demand exceeded the supply for the new handsets, with CEO Tim Cook saying the launch posts new records for first weekend sales. And at number 10, Chinese dissident artist Ai Weiwei is appointed in the jury of the Stockholm Film Festival, even though he is unlikely to be allowed to attend in person. Festival director Git Shania says the artist was chosen because he is a symbol of the repression of artists and journalists. The festival's theme for 2013 is freedom. Shania says she hopes it would highlight the plight of journalists and artists unable to do their work because of censorship. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also, it also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Let's look at today's mood navigator. A look at the mood navigator shows several red circles. Over to the left, a story from today. Jingoy building multi-million peso wak wak house. This has 89% of readers feeling angry and 8% of readers feeling annoyed. Over to the right, something that happened today. Senator Jingoy Estrada's privileged speech has people divided. 58% of people feel annoyed, while 27% of readers feel angry. And over to the right, another red circle. This is an old story. UP student plagiarizes prize-winning photo. This is still in the Mood Navigator and has 71% of people feeling angry and 10% of people feeling annoyed. All contributing to the Mood of the Day. Today, most people are angry. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, September 25, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel in our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. 
We leave you with images of the conflict in Zamboanga City by Patricia Evangelista, Paolo Villaluna, and Raymond Amonoy. From the very first time, hindi pwedeng baliin yung dream ko eh, sundalo. Hindi pwedeng baliin, dream ko talaga yan. Nandoon na ako, nakapag-apply na ako, ang recruit ako ng Philippine Marines. Reject ako, mayroon na ako sakit sa puso. So, na-prostrate ako, matagal kong pangarap. Parang wala na akong pag-asa sa buhay ko. Nag-apply ako ng dishwasher, waiter, hold attendant, utility, house clean. Nag-isip ako eh, I still want to pursue my career. Apply ako sa Manila, apply ako ng police. Pumunta ako ng Manila, unang-una wala akong kamag-anak. Nakatira ako sa hindi ko kilala. Dumidiscarto ako sa Pipi Pintura. Lettering, signboard. Nakasurvive ako doon. Kinakain ko, Skyflakes araw-araw. Milo, Skyflakes, Milo, Skyflakes, Milo. So, nandito na ako sa servisyo. Sabi ko, it's a blessing in disguise. Bakit? Ba't di ako napunta sa Marines? Lahat ng kasabay ko patay na eh. Kung alam mo yung Kaba Bubakar. So, sabi ng mga kasama kong survivor, Surti ka. Hindi ka napasama sa amin. Malamang patay ka na rin ngayon. So, nung nagpulis ako, nung nagsak ako, more than Philippine Marines. Bakit? Trabaho ng Marines, trabaho ng Army. Trabaho ng Army, trabaho ng Army. Trabaho ng Air Force, trabaho ng Army. Trabaho ng Ordinary Policeman, trabaho ng Army. So, yun ang pinipisa. Hindi ko naman pinagsisiyan.